Hey guys, Richie here from RW Hobbies, part number four of my F14 Persian Cat build. This week, we're gonna get this guy final assembly and primed, ready for paint next time. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so a little progress since last week. Um, what I've done is I've basically put the front, front section on. So if you remember before, it went on pretty nicely. Um, and as always, you kind of, when you add these kind of fuse large parts, you want to kind of kind of think about, you know, lining this up. The top is where I want it to look best because on the side, you're not going to see it. It's going to be on the, the, t the shelf, right? So I want to make sure this is nice. So I lined up the top bit, glued it in, and then attack on the bottom, which is a little bit more gnarlier. A little bit of sprue glue added there. Um, just sand it back a little bit. Um, it's always a point though, is like there's a lot of detail. If I sand it, I'm gonna lose this detail. So it's, you know, it's a trade off, but um, we can try to put some of it back in maybe. Um, but added the front section in, and then I've gone around and um, see added some filler. So I've added filler to the sides here, in the gap in the intakes, back here, we need to fix this um, step, sand this back, um, and same on the other side. So back here, um, in here, front end there and um, that is pretty much it so I want to take care of that next um, just want to let this, this dry a little bit more to fill up before I do that um, nose cone just be careful because you get what happens on this is you got like a um, attachment point in the middle of each so you want to leave the two outer ones and just sand the middle now the fit isn't amazing um, obviously you can have this thing open which is the fit you know you're not going to worry about but I want it closed so you know it'll go in um, just a little bit fettling again as always and um, actually doesn't look too bad like that so we're just going to glue it in, in, in um, situ now the tails we did earlier on just simple two piece went together no problem at all um, I don't know yet if I'm going to glue them I want to check the back end here um, and I'm, again, I'm gonna look at painting, see if I want to paint these or add them on now. Um, and then, you know, I'm not sure yet, um, but a wrap around camo, it might be better for us to put on early rather than the end. Cause normally with tails, I like to, you know, um, paint them all separately and then just add them on, on at the very end. Um, but this time around, I'm not quite so sure. So there we go, just clicking that on. Um, so yeah i'm not sure yet at this point so i'm gonna next step i'm gonna get this nose cone glued on sand back and take care of you know all this little gnarly bits we have to take care of and then we can figure out the next steps and what we're gonna do is back end um, if we want to attach those pieces or we're going to paint them separately so let me kind of figure that out and we're back in a couple of seconds all right so it's going to get a nicely excuse all the paint in my hands i just try to strip um, a car body um it's not going so well but here she is so i've added um, a couple parts down the side here cockpit um, painted those black first with Miss Service 1500 black before I applied them and um, add a little bit of a on here there's not really much detail but added a little bit of clear green which is I use like the lacquer which is Mr. Hobby 138 I think Tamiya might do an LP green now at the time they didn't have one so that's why I got Mr. Hobby um, same kind of stuff um, took care of all seams and we're looking pretty groovy also spray painted the um, primes the gun bay here because I'm going to hit that with some white and then put the I think my plan is I'm going to put the cannons in and then I'm going to put the panels over the top with a little bit of PVA glue paint the whole thing and then we're done we can take the panels off um, no problem at all so that's where we're at with this guy um, what I am going to do is before I forget let me get a toothpick and some Mod Podge the usual I use the um, super gloss brilliant extreme which gives that glass like finish and what I'm going to do simply is take a little bit here on the end of my toothpick and just add it to here, top of the clear green. And just going to spread it out with the other side. It's going to self level and it kind of shrinks back a little bit too. Um, so there you go. So it looks very kind of foggy kind of thing that's going to, it's going to dry crystal clear in a couple of hours so let that go on and then we can add the canopy and then we can really get along with getting this ready for paint so put that to the side so let me talk about the canopy so let me throw this away Ugh! reach the reach the trash can so must it up um here's the main part right here it's about to fall off so let me clip it before it breaks um main part and the 
windscreen right there, the windshield. Alrighty, so as you see here, we use the masking set, which is the only mask set you get for the Hobby Boss kit, and it's from Flying Levinette decals. Now, I'm going to go on a bit of a ramp right here. This is for the Hobby Boss kit, which this is, um, A, B, and D. And you know what? It doesn't fit. Again, so we had this problem with the 30 second scale Trumpy Harrier. I got the vinyl deck cord from Flying Devon X. It didn't fit at all. It was a complete mess. Here again, you buy a product designed for, for something and it just doesn't fit. You can see here, I have to cut them in half and then see there and there. That's, we're about two, three, three millimeters short in each one. So I have to cut them short and then fill it in with masking tape in the middle. Um, and then here on the, you see here, we're, we're short again on here. Um, I have to add a little masking tape, I can have masking tape at the front here on each of these to extend it again about a mil or two. So you guys need to get your act together because you're selling a product, you obviously haven't tested it because it doesn't, here you go, this is the proof. It's a mil, it's two or three mils short on each one. Um, I don't think it's that difficult just to create your mask to fit. So unfortunately I won't be buying from these guys again. Their 3D or the resin stuff on the Viper helicopter I did was pretty decent, um, no problems at all. But when it comes to these masks, they just don't fit. Um, I'm nervous I think I got them from the um, Osprey too. So I'm probably gonna have to go get some Edward or some other masks. So again, you know, if this is the way it goes, it's just not worth spending money on stuff that doesn't fit, right? So buy beware. Um, design for this kit, but it doesn't fit. Yeah, there you go. So anyway, so there we go. So I'm gonna let this dry and then simply this fits on really nice fit. This was just glue on top like that. Um, we'll take care of that with some um, clear cement so we don't damage the paintwork. Uh, when I say clear cement, I mean the, this guy, the Tamiya the resin stuff. It comes with a white top or hexagonal bottle if you're in the US. Um, I just changed the lid to the extra thin lid because you have a smaller brush. It's much easier to use when that big thick brush comes in a white top. I just switch the tops out. Um, but cement, I use this all the time. Um, talked about it many times before. Extra thin for tiny little parts, but anything more than like a centimeter or half an inch, I go ahead and use this 99% of my, my builds now. So there we go. So let me go ahead, let this dry, um, get all this stuff on, and we'll move on to the next stage. All right, so I've got a canopy on. Um, as always, using some PVA glue, like a Mod Podge. And just a couple of drops put this guy on just, just hold a canopy while we paint and then what happens is it'll easy pull right off and we can peel off the glue um once we're done with the painting so side here i've put the panels on again as i mentioned with pva glue and that that's all you know the guns hidden behind it there and we again we can pull these off once we get to that stage um once we're done painting so canopies on, as I mentioned, um, first thing you should always do before any primer coat is to spray the clear parts. Because obviously you can see whatever color you put down first is what you're going to see from the inside. So I find MRP dark or gray is a little too runny or thin for the clear parts. I don't want it to run um, underneath the mask. So I used um, XF54, I believe. XF53 or XF54 Tamiya is normally a pretty good um, way to go for these um, US Navy aircraft. So sprayed that on um, yesterday, see it's nice and dry, and now we come back with a primer. As always, it's going to be Mr. Surfacer 1500 Black. Love this stuff, get through gallons of it a year, um, and just the best for me, the best primer. So mix 50-50 lacquer thinner, nice coat down over the whole thing. Um, once that, once that's done, it creates a nice base to do a shadow coat, and then we can go on with all the different camouflage colors, and then the post shading. Alrighty, so you see we've got the, um, the black primer coat down, no problem at all, went down beautifully, as always, and dries very quickly, almost instantly, at least for a couple, two to five minutes, you're good to go, pretty much, it's, I'm using rapid thinner, which dries a lot quicker than the, um, leveling thinner, so there we go, got this down, um, said, so black down, the priming coat, the base coat, now I'm just gonna come back with my usual, um, just bog standard Tamiya, XF to white and all I'm going to do now is just basically spray in the inside all these panels very messily looking and it's going to create a nice kind of shadow coat to put the paint down on now again nothing fancy you don't need to be neat I've done this a million times before on the channel um, so I'm not going to record me doing so but again I'm just going to get take the airbrush and just spray in between all these panels with the white break it all up and then end up being like a gray kind of color so with power editing you will see the finished one in a couple of seconds Okay, so as you see, we've got the um, the shadow coat down. Actually, pretty awesome. Um, so you can see what we do there. So all over, and uh, just no methods in the madness here. Just spraying between all the um, loosely in between all the panel lines and kind of break it up to create a post, 
uh, sorry, appreciating effect. Now, with blues and greys, it's pretty good. But any dark colors, you don't really see it. Um, I do have a habit now, but the fact we're going to throw down three colors, camo colors, we're probably not going to see a lot of this stuff. So it's going to be more post shading than pre shading. I think post shading is, you know, probably more than there used to be a time. So let me hear it. Let me hold this the microphone. I don't know if you can hear that. You can hear that kind of how it rough kind of texture to it. And just from spraying it, the white and stuff. So I'm going to take a very old worn down polishing sponge. Um, and then let's see, I'm just going to. Sand it all back. And now. You're going to hear that smooth, smooth as silk. So I'll take all the rough edges off. And you want it nice and warm, so you don't want to wear away the paintwork you just did on the primer, right? So you just want to get away the high spots, especially around, you know, where parts, you know, there's corners and edges, that kind of thing. That's where all the paint kind of swirls around the airbrush. And you just, you just want to set yourself up for a nice paint effect. So this is basically what, um, you know, car painters do in real life. They, you know, sand down between layers and stuff. And it's, again, very fine. It's probably, I don't know, 3,000 grit, if that. Um, and just going over here, just and now it's really smooth. With a finger, you can just tell to touch it's smooth. So you want to smooth it all down, uh, make sure then you've got a nice base coat for the paintwork, and then come in with just anti-static brush and just get rid of all the dust, and then you're ready for the paintwork. Now I'm going to work way through the whole aircraft and do it. It takes literally two minutes to do all this, um, and then I think it's a good point to end the video here because the paintwork's going to be pretty advanced with the masking set and stuff, and I don't want this video to go on too long. So. I'm going to end this video a little bit, maybe a little bit shorter than usual. I'm going to end this video right now. Um, and then we'll come back next week and we'll get going with the mask set and the free camera colors to really put some color onto this guy. So thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.